Hello armchair detectives, Caroline Mitchell here. I'm an ex-police detective and crime thriller author and today I'm going to be discussing the bizarre and fascinating case of Elisa Lam. The story of Elisa Lam is well known in the true crime community. Today I'll be running through the latest updates on the case as well as some of the conspiracy theories making the rounds. I'll also be giving you my opinion on what I believe really happened so stick around to the end. It's time to get to the bottom of the strange and disturbing case of Elisa Lam. On the 26th of January 2013, 21-year-old Canadian student Elisa Lam took a trip to LA. Elisa was the daughter of David and Yina Lam and she had a sister, Sarah. She was very close to her family and she called them every day. Elisa was described as chatty and thoughtful, kind yet outgoing, one of the nicest people you could meet, which is why her initial disappearance and death came as such a terrible shock. On January the 26th, 2013, Elisa checked into the Cecil Hotel. It's since been renamed the Stay on Main, but we'll call it the Cecil for now. She was only meant to stay a few days, and on January 31st, she was due to check out. She had spoken to a bookshop owner not long before, buying gifts for her family, and she seemed happy and bubbly and spoke to her about traveling and whether the book she bought would be too heavy to carry. But when her checkout time came, she was nowhere to be seen. She didn't call home which was really unusual because she called her family every day. The police searched the building, every nook and cranny, where they used dogs, they used search teams, and Elisa's family came to search too. But there was no sign of her. And two weeks after her disappearance, things took a strange turn when they shared some footage of CCTV taken from inside the hotel. The footage went viral. It literally blew up with conspiracy theories as millions of people watched. The internet was awash with theories from murder to the paranormal to alien involvement. How could this woman just enter a lift and then just disappear into nowhere? But things were to take a very grim turn. On the 19th of February, residents of the Cecil Hotel reported that the water they were using to brush their teeth, bathe in and drink had a foul smell and was black and the water pressure wasn't very good. So staff were sent to 
check it out. And they investigated the four water tanks which service the rooms, the kitchen and coffee shops in the hotel. I know what you're thinking, this is not going to end well. And sadly it didn't. Elisa's body was found in one of the tanks. The doors were sealed, alarmed, and residents didn't have access to the tank. So how did she get there? There was no ladder. The door on the top was shut over her. She was a slim girl. How the heck would she have done that? And she was reported to have been found naked in the water tank. Strangely, her social media posts on Tumblr continued to be updated after she died. And her phone was nowhere to be seen. So what the heck happened to Elisa Lam? Before I can go into my most recent findings, I just want to say that this is a real person, flesh and blood, loved, missed by her family and friends. So although my theory may not be the most popular one, it does make the most sense. So let's talk about Elisa. Well, she used social media a lot and it seemed to help with the depression that just plagued her. She had a love of books, of fashion, and she discussed her mental health problems on there a lot. I'm going to read you some excerpts from her posts which were quite sad to read but it will give you an indication of what was going through her mind at the time. I spent about two days in bed hating myself. You're so freaking lazy. You're a phony. You're a nobody. God I hate you so much. I haven't felt fine in over three years. This relapse makes me feel as if I haven't made any progress at all. The truth is Elisa had been struggling with mental health issues for years. She was diagnosed with depression and a bipolar disorder for which she was receiving medication. But when her parents reported her disappearance to the police they did not mention her mental health problems and this threw them off the track. I know people would say why? What, what difference is that make of it. she's missing she's missing but in my experience in the police when someone is missing you build an instant profile and that does make a difference as to how you search for them where you look and what you think they could have done at the time of her death elisa was on four separate medications to deal with her mental health problems initially she stayed in a shared room as part of the hotel was a hostel she didn't stay there very long though because the other guests complained about her odd behavior and she was moved to a room on her own. The Cecil Hotel isn't situated in one of the best areas in LA. It puts a roof over some of the most vulnerable people in society. The hotel was situated on Skid Row. So let's touch upon some of the theories circulating the internet before I tell you what I think's happened and bring you up to date with the latest information so far. The Cecil Hotel was built in 1921 but it could give Stephen King's Overlook Hotel a run for its money with its dark history. People say it's haunted. Indeed, there's meant to be photographic proof. Two serial killers were meant to have stayed there, but it's an old hotel. There's been a plethora of suicides and deaths, but it survived the Great Depression, a time when many people turned to suicide. It's got over 600 rooms, and if you investigate most hotels that are that old in that sort of an area, you're gonna find a bit of a dark history there too. Now, I'm not one to dismiss the paranormal, don't get me wrong. I had my experience with the paranormal when I was in the police, so my mind is very open when it comes to paranormal experiences. But believe me, I don't think paranormal experiences have had a look in with this case. At the very worst, it could be that the hotel held a negative, dark energy that could have made Elisa's depression worse, but it wasn't paranormal events that killed Elisa Lam. Some people say that Elisa was murdered by staff and dumped in the tank. Gosh, until you've lifted a dead body, you have no idea of how heavy they are. And I mean no disrespect. I'm always thinking of the victims and the families when I make these videos. But equally, I'm here to share my personal experiences from being in the police. And when people say dead weight, they're not exaggerating. They're heavy. I mean, really heavy and hard to lift. And I cannot imagine anyone who would have been able to go to all the trouble of carrying a dead body without being seen through a hotel, upstairs, through doors, up the steps, the ladder to a water tank and put them in there. I'm sorry, but if you work in a hotel, you would know every room in that hotel. And you would also know that if you ran into a situation where you murdered someone, then the best way of getting rid of them would be to open a window and push them out and make it look like suicide. Yes, my mind is is very dark but that makes sense to me or you could fill a bath and make it look like they've killed themselves and dispose of them that way you would not 
hoist someone up one of the most difficult places to get to, knowing full well that it is only a matter of time before you're found out, what would be the point? So no, I don't believe she was murdered. Now, Elisa did uh, go on rooftops at times. She took photos of rooftops not long before she died. So she wasn't scared to go up there and perhaps she felt a sense of freedom in the open air. So was it an accident? Did she go up there to take photos and just fell in? Well, no, apparently her body was found naked so I don't think that's an accident in that sense of the word. You never really know but personally I don't think she committed suicide and I don't think she would have allowed people to find her like that. Really if you're going to commit suicide there's better ways of doing it than ending up in a water tank where people are drinking the water and I think she would have thought of a better way than that and it's quite terrifying. You think going into that dark space and I just I just don't think it was suicide myself. Okay so if it wasn't any of the theories I've mentioned above what did happen to her? Well I've got a couple of updates that really made up my mind for me but I was swaying that way anyway to tell you the truth. Elisa's phone wasn't taken and her posts weren't mysteriously displayed on social media after she died. They were most likely put in a queuing system as you can arrange beforehand for them to go out on certain dates and times. She also mentioned on social media that she lost her phone, which she probably did. She wasn't playing the elevator game as been suggested. She wasn't possessed. She wasn't undergoing some bizarre ritual or running away from someone she was frightened of. I just don't buy any of those theories. I've watched that video over and over again and her body language seems like someone who is having a psychotic episode. I've dealt with people having psychotic episodes in the police and a lot of the time it is just down to them not taking their medication properly, which seems to be the case with Elisa. Her facial expression, the way her arms are almost limp at stages, the, her splaying of the hands, the way she's jumping in and out like she's scared, it all lines up with a psychotic episode. And I believe she was in the throes of one before she disappeared. Her mental health was declining. She was abusing her medication in that she wasn't taking it properly. She wasn't taking the correct dosage of her medication and a large amount of meds and some alcohol was shown in a toxology tests. In the video you can clearly see that she's very unwell and her expression to me looks like someone who's undergoing hallucinations. According to the National Library of Medicine, using antidepressants to treat bipolar disorder can induce manic side effects if done so without caution. So what about getting onto the roof? It's a lot easier than initially reported. Indeed, this video of a journalist shows just how easy it was for him to get up there. And yes, the hatch was even open and the ladder was placed up against one of the tanks. And this wasn't long after Elisa disappeared. Another sticking point for many people was the fact that the hatch was reported to have been closed over Elisa while she was in the tank. And indeed, that was one that made me wonder. In court documents, support worker San Diego Lopez reported that the tank top was actually opened when he found Elisa. He said, I noticed the hatch to the main water tank was open and I looked inside and saw an Asian woman lying face up in the water approximately 12 inches from the top of the tank. Initially, before I even found that information, I was going to say it could be that staff just lied and said the tank top was closed because they knew they would get into serious trouble. I mean, this is the water that feeds the hotel, the coffee shop, the guests. That's meant to be closed. Anything could fly in there. And it seems they hadn't been taking proper measures when it came to the water source. In November 2019, retired LAPD homicide detective Greg Cadding revealed that a sniffer dog actually picked up Elisa Lamb's scent at the window which led to the fire escape in the building. He said most people don't even know that there had been an alert. The dog did go down the hallway and alert at the window and that window leads directly to the fire escape. Once outside however the dog lost the scent. So it sounds like the dog had done his job in far as tracking her to the window. 
The full coroner's report released in June stated that Elisa Lam's body had been found naked and this was also a sticking point for me. I couldn't understand that. But then it also stated that her clothing was found with her in the water tank and this was clothing similar to what she was wearing in the CCTV footage. Her watch and a room key was also found with her and the clothing was said to contain a sand-like particulate which doesn't surprise me. I mean it's probably dust or dirt that came into that open water water tank. I think that she possibly took off her clothes and just threw them in and jumped in after them or maybe the clothes came off afterwards but they were with her. I think the gift of hindsight is a great thing as we always say in the police. Now when people look at what happened they say why didn't the police do this or why didn't people do that but really at the time the police were looking for a missing person they had no idea of her mental health issues or how this was going to turn out. I feel that closure has been made. So what do you think? Do you disagree with me? Is there anything I've left out? Have you got theories of your own? I would still love to hear them. Please leave your comments in the box below. And if you found value in my video, I'd hugely appreciate a subscribe and a like. Thank you for joining me as always. And please don't worry too much. These crimes are very rare and you shouldn't lose any sleep over them. Until next time. Bye bye.